empty desert flatness. It is much like your town, perhaps. It might be more like your town than you'd like to admit. It is a friendly desert community where the sun is hot, the moon is beautiful, and mysterious lights pass overhead while we all pretend to sleep. Welcome to Nightdale. Pawn shops in Nightvale work like this. First, you need an item to pawn. To get this, you need a lot of time behind you, years spent living and existing, until you've reached a point where you believe that you exist, and that a physical item exists, and the concept of ownership exists, and that, improbable as all those things are, these absurd beliefs line up in a way that results in you owning an item. Good job. Nicely done. <laughs> Second, once you believe you own an item, you must reach a point where you need money more than you need the item. This is the easiest step. Just own an item and own a body with needs and wait. The only pawn shop in town, in the town of Nightvale, is run by the very young Jackie Fierro. It has no name, but if you need it, you will know where it is. This knowledge will come suddenly, often while you are in the shower. You will collapse, surrounded by a bright, glowing blackness, and you will find yourself on your hands and knees, the warm water running over you, and you will know where the pawn shop is. <laughs> You will smell must and soap and feel a stab of panic about how alone you are. It will be like most showers that you have taken. <laughs> Before you can offer Jackie your item, there will first be some hand washing, which is why there are bowls of purified water throughout the shop. You need to chant a little as you wash your hands. You, of course, should always chant when you wash your hands. It is only hygienic. <laughs> when you have been properly purified, you will lay the item on the counter, and Jackie will consider it. Jackie will have her feet up on the counter. She will lean back. Eleven dollars, she will say. She will always say eleven dollars. <laughs> You will not respond. You are ultimately unnecessary to this process. You are ultimately unnecessary. <laughs> no, no, she will say, waving her hand. Then she will name her actual price. Usually it is money. Sometimes it is other things. Sometimes it is dreams, experiences, visions. Then you will die. <laughs> but only for a little while. The item will be given a price tag, $11. Everything in the pawn shop is that price, no matter what she loaned you for it. Once you are no longer dead, she will give you a ticket, which later you will be able to exchange for the item. Or, at any time, you may look at the ticket and remember the item. Remembering the item is free. You are leaving the story now. You were only an example, and it is probably safer for you not to be in this story anyway. Jackie Fierro squinted out the window at the parking lot. There was no one coming. She was closing soon, relatively speaking. She was always closing soon, and always just opening. Beyond the window was the parking lot, and beyond that lay the desert, and beyond that the sky, mostly void, partially stars. Layered from her vantage, it was all distance, equally unreachable from her post at the counter. She had recently turned 19. She had been recently 19 for as long as she could remember. The pawn shop had been hers for a long time, centuries, maybe. Clocks and calendars don't work in Night Vale. Time itself does not work. For all her years, as the newly 19 owner of the pawn shop, she left the shop only when it was closed, and then only to her apartment, where she sat with her feet up on the coffee table, taking in the community radio and the local cable news. Based on what the news told her, the outside world seemed a dangerous place. There was always some world-ending cat.
cataclysm, threatening night veil, feral dogs, a sentient glowing cloud with the ability to control minds. Although the glow cloud had become less threatening since its election to the local school board. <laughs> Old oak doors that led to a strange desert otherworld where the current mayor had been trapped for months. It seemed safer to not have friends or hobbies. To sit at work, head down, doing her job, and then sit at home, glass after glass of orange juice, radio on, safe from anything that might disrupt her routine. Her days were spent in silence, mostly void, partially thought. Some days she would recatalog her inventory. Other days she would clean the shelves. Every day she would sit and think. She would try to think about the day she took over the store. There must have been a day like that, but she could not think of the specifics. She had been doing this for decades. She was very young. Both of these were true at the same time. She knew college was a thing 19-year-olds did. She knew being unemployed in a difficult job market and living at home was a thing other 19-year-olds did. She was content doing neither of those, so she continued on and on and on at the pawn shop. She understood the world and her place in it. She understood nothing. The world and her place in it were nothing, and she understood that. Because of the lack of working time in Night Vale, she went off her gut feeling about when the pawn shop should close. When the feeling came, it came, and the doors had to be locked, removed from their frames, and safely hidden. The feeling came, she swung her feet off the counter, a decent day. Old woman Josie, who lived out by the car lot, had come in with a great number of cheap plastic flamingos. She had carried them in a large canvas sack and emptied them onto the counter like loose change. It is not for myself that I give up these little ones, Old woman Josie said, addressing a bare wall several feet to the right of Jackie in a strong formal voice, making the occasional sweeping gesture with her palm, but for the future. <laughs> Josie stopped, her palm still out. Jackie decided the speech was over. All right, man, I'll give you $11, she said. Old woman Josie tightened her eyes at the bare wall. Ah, okay, Jackie softened prodding at one of the flamingos and looking at its weak plastic belly. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a good night's sleep. Old woman Josie shrugged. I'll take it. A good night's sleep was a wildly generous offer. The flamingos were worthless, but there were so many of them and Jackie couldn't help herself. She never refused an item. Be careful not to touch those directly, Josie said after she was finished being dead. <laughs> Using shop rags, Jackie laid the flamingos out side by side on a shelf, each one tagged with a single handwritten $11 price tag. Most things shouldn't be touched anyway, Jackie thought. Goodbye, dear, said Josie, taking the ticket that Jackie had filled out. Come by sometime and talk to the angels. They've been asking about you. The angels lived with old woman Josie in her small tract home whose tract no longer stood, leaving it alone at the edge of town. The angels did chores for her, and Josie made a modest income selling items they had touched. No one understood why the angels lived with her. Very little was understood about the angels. Some things were. Of course, angels do not exist. It is illegal to consider their existence or even to give them a dollar when they forget bus money and start hovering around the routes asking for change. <laughs> the great hierarchy of angels is a foolish dream and anyway is forbidden knowledge to Night Vale citizens. All of the angels in Night Vale live with Josie out by the car lot. There are no angels in Night Vale. <laughs> around the middle of the day, Jackie had acquired a car. It was a Mercedes, only a few years old, and offered with urgency by a young man wearing a gray, pinstriped business suit stained with dirt. It was impressive how he got the car onto the counter, but there was a way these things are done, and it had to go on the counter. 
He washed his hands and chanted. The water went brown and red. She settled on an offer of five dollars and talking him down from eleven, and he laughed as he took the money and the ticket. <laughs> it's not funny at all, he explained, laughing. And finally, a woman <coughs> named Diane Creighton arrived late in the afternoon, almost closing time according to Jackie's gut. Can I help you? Jackie asked. She was unsure why she asked this, as Jackie rarely greeted people who came into the store. Jackie knew who Diane was. She organized PTA fundraisers. Diane sometimes came by to distribute flyers that said things like, Night Vale High School PTA Fund Drive. Help give kids the municipally approved education they deserve. Your support is mandatory and appreciated. <laughs> Diane, in Jackie's mind, looked just like a woman who would be an active PTA mom, with her kind face and comfortable clothing. She also thought Diane looked like a woman who would be a loan officer, with her conservative makeup choices and serious demeanor. She would look like a pharmacist if she were ever to wear the standard white coat, gas mask, and hip waders. <laughs> she looked like a lot of things to Jackie. Mostly, she looked like a person lost in both a place and a moment. Diane took a handkerchief from a purse. Without changing her upward, distant expression, she wept a single tear onto the cloth. I'd like to offer this, she said, finally looking at Jackie. Jackie considered the handkerchief. The tear would dry soon. Eleven dollars. That's the deal, she said. I'll take it, Diane said. Her loose hanging arms were now drawing up her purse. Jackie took the tear-dabbed handkerchief and gave Diane her ticket and the money. After her brief death, Diane thanked her and hurried out of the shop. Jackie tagged the tear with its $11 price tag and placed it on a shelf. So, a decent day. Jackie flipped her sign on the door to closed, her hand touching the window, leaving its ghost upon the glass, a hand raised to say, stop, or come here, or hello, or help, or maybe only I am here. This hand, at least, is real. She looked down to adjust the items on the counter, and when she looked up, the man was there. He was wearing a tan jacket and holding a deer skin suitcase.